Hey, welcome back to the channel. So, as you guys know, I shoot most of the videos that I make on this channel, either on my iPhone, which is what I'm filming on right now, or on my GoPros. Now, I think GoPros in general are extremely amazing cameras, especially when you're creating content for like YouTube or Instagram or any of the other social platforms. But according to me, what makes them truly versatile are the amount of mounts and accessories that you can get, either first party or third party, that let you use your GoPros in different ways. Using different mounts and accessories will let you use your GoPro as a vlogging camera, as a cinematic camera, as a talking head camera for a YouTube studio video or anything of the sort. So today we're going to look at my favorite GoPro travel accessories in my GoPro travel kit. These are the accessories that I'm using for 2021 and I'm going to tell you why I like these accessories and what's special about them and why I would recommend each and every one of these things for you so that you can take your GoPro filmmaking to a whole different level. This is my GoPro Essential Accessory Kit for travel for 2021. Okay, we're going to start off by removing a bunch of gear from the inside. We've got a bunch of thumb screws, an adhesive mount, a couple of these. We're going to look at it in a bit. We're going to start off with the cameras for beginners. The first camera I want to talk about is the Hero 9 Black. The Hero 9 Black is now currently mounted inside the media mod. I have been pretty torn on this media mod to be completely honest because I don't think the audio that you get out of it is that much better. But on the overall, it just makes it easier for me to attach different audio equipment as well as lights using these cold shoe mounts. And I think it's really nice. I click this on and it gives it a little bit more professional look. So I actually like that. But other than that, it's not that great and it's not essential, but I use it. You also have a USB-C pass-through, which makes it a lot easier to keep your GoPro charging via pass-through when you're shooting, which I think is really nice. So this is my camera of choice. The next thing I keep in the same division is an additional GoPro battery. This battery is for the Hero 9 Black. Yes, GoPro did improve the quality of battery life on the Hero 9 Black, but to be completely honest, when you shoot with it in 5K, it's still gonna give you just about an hour, an hour and a half of battery life. So I prefer carrying an additional battery. It's always charged up. Now let's keep this little guy. This is the battery door for the GoPro Hero 9. You have to take it off when you mount it into the media mod. So in case I ever wanna just use the GoPro without the media mod, this is essential to maintain the waterproof integrity. The next camera we're looking at is the GoPro Max. This is GoPro's second attempt at making a 360 camera and I think it's fantastic. It's got six microphones on it. It's got two lenses front and back so you can get 360 view. Overall, I think it's a great camera for 360 shots especially and to give you a different point of view. It's extremely wide, the lenses that you have inbuilt in this, so I really love that. And other than that, it also acts as a fantastic backup camera to the GoPro Hero 9. For example, if I'm shooting a time lapse on the Hero 9 and it's mounted, but I want to talk about something on camera and just vlog for the minute, I can definitely use this with this lens and this front facing screen in Hero mode and not 360 mode and actually be able to vlog on it. So it's a great backup camera to have to the Hero 9 and it's an extremely versatile device to have on the overall. So the next item that we're going to be looking at is the GoPro Magnetic Swivel Clip, which is one of GoPro's most versatile accessories. It has a magnetic mount and attachment at the back so you can just magnetize your GoPro to absolutely anything. It uses your standard thumb screw mounting system, which all GoPros have. I actually have a buckle mount always mounted on this, so I can just quickly put on a thumb screw and attach my GoPro to it. Furthermore, it also swivels, so you can clamp your GoPro onto any metal surface and change the orientation in which you want to film, which I think is great. Furthermore, it also comes with this little clamp, which is actually a jaw. It's got a nice rubberized coating on the inside. Now, this is not going to be clamped onto a pole or you can't clamp it onto a handrail or places like that because the clamp doesn't have that much of flex and that much of width to it. But you can clamp this to your backpack to get some really nice POV or point of view kind of shots. You can also clamp it onto your t-shirt or your clothes, your chest if you can, and you can get a bunch of different versatile shots using just this one particular mount. Furthermore, you you can also use it as a vlogging setup where you can just hold your camera out like that, put your GoPro on this, vlog with it, and it can be an all-in-one accessory on the overall. I think GoPro did a great job with this and I'm a big fan. Let's talk tripods. The only two which I normally use. We're going to look at the first one which I normally keep in this compartment. This is the GoPro Shorty. Now, the GoPro Shorty is my ultimate favorite tripod grip. It's really nice, great vlogging handle just like this. The best part about it is that it does extend so you can get a little bit more reach. Furthermore, it does change and extend out and turn into a really small tripod if you want to take immediate time lapses which I think is fantastic. So this is the first tripod of choice. I always have this in my GoPro travel kit and I never go anywhere without it. The next item is what I don't keep inside the case, but it's always in my backpack when I'm traveling. It's the GoPro 3-way extension clip. This grip is fantastic. It just acts as a standard grip for your GoPros. You can mount your GoPro right here and use it to vlog or use it to film something. Furthermore, it's also a really nice extension pole, which goes really, really far, and you can get some really great 360 shots if you're using the Max. You can also get some really nice action shots using your GoPro Hero 9 by getting this much of extension, get a wider shot on the overall. It also acts as 
a tripod which comes out from here which packs down really well you just turn it inverted tripod legs are going to open up like that i absolutely love it you can actually bend the tripod any way you like and get the shot that you're actually looking for this is one of gopro's most versatile grips it's extremely old it's been in the market for a couple of years but it's one of gopro's best sellers and you can see exactly why The next accessory is the newest in my GoPro kit. This is the GoPro Jaw Flex clamp. It looks a little weird, but it's insanely amazing. It's got a clamp which is extremely wide. It's definitely wider and deeper than what you have on your GoPro magnetic swivel clip. So this one can definitely be clamped onto poles. It can be clamped onto handrails. I haven't used this much, but I have a lot of use cases where I can use it. It also uses a buckle mount on top, so it's really great. It's very easy to use your GoPro. Furthermore, it has a good amount of flex. Use this instead of a tripod when you have uneven surfaces in the open air area because it's extremely extremely strong and extremely secure. Furthermore, you can also clamp your GoPro using this clip to a table, bend the flex clamp, get really nice top-down shots. It's insanely versatile. The next thing that I want to show you is the GoPro Light Mod. The Light Mod is one of GoPro's cutest and coolest accessories. It's a really powerful light with three levels of lighting in it. It can be used for vlogging in conditions where you have less than favorable light. Furthermore, it also comes with your standard finger mounting, which can be removed. You can also attach it to the Media Mod by removing the finger mounting. And you can basically just use the cold shoe at the bottom of it, put it onto the Media Mod, use it as a fantastic vlogging setup. I'm a big fan. You don't really need this light, to be very honest, if you're invested in others, but the fact that it's so tiny and powerful, you can use it for various scenarios, even if you're out trekking or doing any adventure stuff it's always good to have a handy small light with you i also recently purchased this little item which is basically nd filters nd filters are neutral density filters these are basically additional lenses for your gopro these aren't the highest quality nd filters of the market they're made by a company called telesyn but they get the job done also i love the way these add on put them on top they have a good amount of ceiling and you now have sunglasses for your gopro essentially if you don't know what an nd filter is well an nd filter is basically like sunglasses for your camera what we usually used to have is nd filters for mirrorless cameras or dslr cameras but a lot of companies like Telesyn have started making ND filters for GoPros. You also have Polar Pro and Moment that's jumped into the market. So ND filters basically help you control your exposure. They reduce the amount of light that's actually entering your lens. Furthermore, they also allow you to control your shutter speed to your corresponding frame rate that you're shooting at. For example, a standard rule when you're shooting video is if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you want to dial in your shutter speed to 1 by 48. This gives you the correct motion blur in your videos and it also helps you get that more cinematic look and cinematic feel when you're shooting. Now, for example, if you're shooting at 20 four frames per second and you've already dialed in your shutter speed to 1 by 48 under very bright conditions this will probably overexpose your image now there are two ways to control the exposure on your image when that happens one is by closing down the aperture but on a gopro and on a phone your apertures on your lenses are already fixed and they're not controllable so the next way to do this is by cranking up your shutter speed so for example you're shooting at 24 frames and you're at 1 by 48 shutter speed right now what you're going to do is you're going to crank up your shutter speed to 1 by 96 or something higher than that which is basically anything higher than 1 by 48 until you get the right exposure. Now what that's going to actually do for you is take away the cinematic motion blur from your videos and that's not ideal because you can't maintain the 180 degree rule of video. So you put this on top of your lens, it's going to reduce the amount of light that's coming into your camera, regulate the exposure for you and it's also going to let you keep the 180 degree rule that is at 24 frames per second, you can keep your shutter speed at 1 by 48 and maintain all the motion blur and the cinematic look and feel of your video. This basically comes in a pack of three. You have the ND8 which is for almost everyday use, you have ND16 which is for brighter conditions and you have ND3 32 when you're shooting really really deep in the afternoon when the sun is literally on top of you and it's extremely bright these are basically underwater lens covers for your gopro max i've never really used them because i never really use my max underwater furthermore they can also be used to protect your lenses when you're just out in general conditions but you need to keep in mind that if you shoot with these directly into the sunlight you will get a little bit of flaring so i haven't really used them but i keep them at hand so other than the stuff that i've actually shown you in my kit there are a couple of items and accessories that i don't still have but i'm going to tell you about them. the first thing i'm going to talk about is the gopro max grip now the gopro max grip is really long extension pole it's an extension it's extremely similar to the gopro three-way but it's a lot more stable so if you don't get a three-way try and get the max grip it's pretty cool it also acts as a tripod the next would be the gopro protective housing the waterproof housing for the gopros now let me tell you something gopros the gopro hero 7 have been waterproof and all of them will continue to be waterproof but they can go to a certain level in the water and as you go down deeper in water the water pressure is going to increase so when you're doing any high intensity water sport and the gopro falls into the water with a high amount of force and pressure the pressure regulation which is there for the ceiling within the gopro is going 
going to get tampered. So what you need to do at that point is ideally just put your GoPro into this housing. The next is going to be the GoPro bite mount. I do have the buckle mount, which I just put in my mouth with my GoPro mounted on them, but that's not the ideal way. Again, I do a lot of POV stuff, so I will be getting the bite mount because it's just a lot more comfortable for extended periods of use. The final accessory that I would tell you guys about is the dive filters, which are made by Polar Pro. So when you go underwater, yes, GoPros can film underwater, but for you to get a clearer image, you should ideally use the dive filters. You get a green, a blue, and a red filter, if I'm not wrong, do a phenomenal job. So if you're somebody who's into scuba diving, definitely invest in a set of dive filters to get the crispiest images and the best video quality when you're underwater. Here's another thing that you need to look at. This is the GoPro adhesive mount. So normally when you buy a GoPro, you're gonna get two of these in the case. Now this one is something that I've already used, so it's not as adhesive as it was. The two ways you can go about this, you can actually just get a new one from Amazon and become really, really cheap, or you can buy them from GoPro's website, which in India is always sold out. It is still slightly adhesive, so you can also try and get some double-sided tape, put it at the bottom of this, put your GoPro on top of that and use it. I have done this a couple of times. Of course, if you're doing extremely high intensity action sports, you don't want to do this. And then my one of my favorite accessories, a microfiber cloth is a must for any tech bag, any camera bag, anything involved with electronics, you need to have one of these. It's essential to clean your lenses with this. Also, it just helps you take the dust off all your equipments. And I don't know, I just prefer keeping everything crispy clean at all times. So I always have this. Now, additionally, what I also keep with me at hand whenever I'm carrying my GoPro accessories, I consider it to be a part of all my travel kits and all my tech kits. It's a power bank. GoPros have this amazing ability to be charged by a power bank when you're on the go. You can actually film at the same time, so that's fantastic. So if you don't have additional GoPro batteries like I do in my kit, it's always essential to have a power bank. And the one that I prefer to use is this 13,000 milliamp hour high power delivery power bank by Anchor. It's actually made for the Nintendo Switch, but it can charge up almost anything that I have in my tech bag and in my camera bag. Our standard GoPro USB-C to USB-A cable, it's just essential to keep it with you in your GoPro tech pouch at all times, because you can also transfer data to your computer or your iPad using this. So I didn't talk about these when I pulled them out of the box earlier. These are the GoPro buckle mount, which basically gets onto any GoPro accessory. It clamps on your GoPro to any of the tripods, any of the grips, any of the mounting systems. You get this whenever you buy most GoPro accessories, as well as you get one in the box when you get a GoPro and a thumb screw. According to me, it's always good to have a spare in case the original one bends or breaks. I haven't actually broken one, but I don't know. It's just me. I always carry a spare with me. And finally, a multi-port dongle, an SD card and a micro SD card reader. It also has a bunch of other ports on it. This is essential if you're using an Apple product. They only come with USB-C ports, so, well, the USB-C dongle. Thanks for watching another episode of Essential Tech. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button, the bell notification. See you in the next one.